In this video, I'll give you a quick run through of light linking and shadow linking in Blender and a quick, simple, practical example of why this might be useful to you. So I've got a basic scene here, which you can see. I've got a monkey, some cylinders with a nice little bevel on the edge. Same with the cubes. They've also got a subdivision surface modifier on them to make them look all nice. And I've got three lights surrounding the scene. And of course, a floor here. I've also set up what's called an infinity screen. So if I show you what that looks like, it's just a plane with an extruded edge, and then this is beveled. But that can look quite nice in a composition slash photography kind of way. So nothing too complicated there. Let's go across to the shading workspace. In my shading workspace, I've gone across to rendered preview mode, and I'm in cycles. Light linking only works in cycles, I'm afraid. I've got the 3D viewport on this side, so we can see which light is selected, and I've got the shader editor open at the bottom here. You can also see that I've got an HDRI in the background, so we can get some nice reflections and you can set that up under world and add in an HDRI here and you can download these from places like Polyhaven. I'll go back to object and let's select one of our lights so I'll select this one over the side here. This one's much smaller the smaller you make your lights the harder the shadows which you can probably see here nice hard shadows. This one's nice and big so it's making softer shadows and you can hardly see them there. This one is also quite big at the back and that's creating soft shadows coming forwards. So I'll start with this one. I'll go across to the lighting data tab here. I'll up the strength so it's really strong at 4000, really bright and strong and change it to a bright red. So it's really obvious what we're doing with this light. Now the light linking section is under the object properties. I really feel it ought to be under the lighting properties personally, but still let's scroll down and it's under the shading tab here. Again, I don't think that's a good name for it, but that's just me. So we've got three things here, light group, that's quite cool, that came in with Blender 3.2 and you can set up which lights you want rendered at a different time. I won't talk about that today. The new features are light linking and shadow linking. And you can see we're gonna add a new light linking setup here. Nothing changes in my viewport yet, but with this light selected and light linking enabled, I can bring one of these objects into here and have it not affected by the light. So let's go for Suzanne, an obvious choice. I'll click and drag from the outliner down into here. And hopefully you can see the red light has disappeared except for Suzanne, which still keeps the red light in these splattered sections here. So that's with Suzanne ticked there. This light is only affecting Suzanne. I can untick this. Now the light is affecting everything but Suzanne. You can still see some red because of the reflections, but if I click on this and bring the roughness right up, it's easier to see that it's not being affected. I'll quickly put that back because I quite like it and select my light again. So when an object's in here, it will be either the only thing affected with it ticked like this, which looks pretty cool, or the only thing not affected when it's unticked. And of course I can select on this, delete it, and we're back to the original with everything being affected by the light. You can also drag collections into here. So I've got all my objects, not the floor, but all the objects on the floor in an objects collection. I can click and drag that, bring that in, and you can see they're all being affected by that light. I can tick this, and they're all not being affected by the light, but the floor is. Hence, we're getting these reflections in here. So again, I'll select that and delete it, and everything is now being affected. Just underneath the light linking, we have shadow linking. So I'll click on that. And again, I'll select Suzanne and drag it in. Watch what happens to the shadows over here when I drag Suzanne in. Suzanne keeps her shadow, but the rest have lost it. And if I tick this here, Suzanne will have lost the shadow and everything else keeps it. And of course we can select Suzanne, delete them from the group and we're back to normal. Now one practical example of where this is useful, if I have my infinity screen, so I'll hide the floor, bring back the infinity screen. Incidentally, this is the viewport and this is the render just in case that was confusing. And you can see in my 3D viewport that my backlight just here is being blocked by my infinity screen, but my infinity screen looks so cool. I want to keep it and I want the backlight in there. Now in this example, I could probably bring my backlight in front of the screen, so G then Y, and just bring it in front. And that would just about work. I could probably make it a bit wider and so forth. But there's scenarios where it's not that simple. Well, we can, with that backlight selected, create a new shadow linking, click and drag our infinity screen in there and untick it. So that's the only thing we don't want affected. And you can see we've still got the effects of that backlight now with that lovely blue glow in the background. Now it might be the case that you only want it on the objects and not on the floor. So we can create a light linking group here, click and drag the infinity screen in there, and say we don't want it to be affected at all by that light. 
So we've got both the light not affecting the infinity screen and the infinity screen not casting shadows from this light. And you can see we've still got this nice blue glow to the back there, but it's not affecting our floor. And if I were to reduce the power of this, we'd probably be able to see that blue glow a bit easier, which looks quite nice there, I would say. This is especially true if I click on my infinity screen and turn the roughness right down and start seeing the reflections. You can see those lights being reflected there. They're a little bit annoying, but you can't see the blue light in the background. So you can probably see from there how useful this can be. So that's a quick overview of light linking. Let me know if you've got any questions in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.